Hey everybody, Dr. A here, and in this video, we're going to be exploring an example of a moment of inertia calculation, uh, but this time of a composite shape. So given to us, we're being asked to compute the moment of inertia values about the centroidal X and Y axes. So ultimately, we need IX and IY in this problem. So let's take a look at what we have. Here we have kind of a U-shape uh, area. Um, or it's like a C shape flipped on its side, and we're given all of its dimensions. We see that these two thicknesses on either side are one inch. We see the height of the entire shape is seven inches. The total width is eight inches, and the thickness of this little piece right here is one inch, okay? Now, if you notice, no origin was explicitly given to us. Whenever you have a shape and an origin or a datum is not provided, then just define your own. So a convenient spot is usually one of the corners. I'm going to put our origin in the bottom left corner here, and I'm going to give us a, a vertical axis Y and a horizontal axis X. Sometimes these are called datums, D-A-T-U-M. A datum is just a reference axis. So this is like a horizontal datum down here and this is a vertical datum. So if you ever see the vocabulary word datum, it just means reference axis, and it really just corresponds with where you're defining an origin. So the next thing we wanna do is we wanna separate this uh, shape into um, simpler shapes. So there are a couple of options here. So one option, and, and maybe don't write this down just yet, because um, I'm gonna show two different options. One option is splitting the shape uh, vertically like this. So you'll have this as one rectangle, this is another rectangle, and then this is a third rectangle. That's one option. What do you think a second good option is? Well, I would say another good option would be if we split the shape right here and right here. Okay, and so when you do it that way, you're going to have one rectangle here, another one down here that has that total width of eight inches, and a third right here. Now, either one of these options is, uh, is going to be about the same amount of work, and you will get the same answer at the end of it all. So it doesn't matter how you separate your shape out. It is completely irrelevant. I'm just going to stick with what I drew right now. And I'm going to label each of these parts, uh, part one, part two, and part three is going to be this long rectangle down here, okay? Now, if you notice, parts one and part two uh, are the same size, and uh, we have symmetry on our side here. So the first thing I'm going to do is go ahead and collect my areas, okay? So I'm going to write solution. All right, solution. I'm gonna go ahead and calculate my areas, all right? So I'm gonna say area one and area two are equal to what? Well, it's these two areas and they're the same as one another. So what's their height? Well, if you just look carefully, the height here is six inches and it's gonna be the same on both sides. So you have a six by one area. So Area one and area two are equal to each other and they are six square inches. And then area three, that bottom rectangle is eight by one inch. So that's gonna be eight square inches, okay? Now, the next thing we need to do, um, remember in order to compute moment of inertia values of a composite shape, we first need the location of the centroid. So I'm gonna make a note to myself. I'm gonna say, we must compute X bar and Y bar in order to compute IX and IY, okay? So we need the um, locations of the centroid to compute uh, the moment of inertia values, okay? Now, if you look carefully, because we have symmetry working for us 
notice that um, we have a, a line of symmetry right in the middle here. So what does that tell us about um, X bar? Well, X bar is literally just gonna be half of this eight inches. So X bar is gonna be measured from the origin halfway over, okay? So we've got this dimension right here, that's four inches, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and write that down. X bar is four inches. And that's, you can visually see that due to symmetry, okay? Now, what about Y bar? Well, Y bar, we're gonna have to compute it using uh, our generic formula that we've um, gone over in a previous video. That's gonna be summation I goes from one to N of Y sub I, A sub I, all divided by summation I goes from one to N of A sub I. So we have three parts here, so we can expand this and say y1 a1 plus y2 a2 plus y3 a3 all divided by a1 plus a2 plus a3. Now what's awesome about this is we already have all these area values. So if you like to check things off, you can check off a1, 2, and 3. Okay, now what we need is um, y1, y2, and y3. Well, remember, y1, 2, and 3 are the, um, the perpendicular distances measured from the origin to the center of each part, okay? So, for example, y1 is going to be the distance from the origin up to the center of rectangle number 1, all right? So, y1 is going to be this distance to this point here. And then Y2, even though it's it's on the other side, it's still at the same height as Y1. So Y1 and Y2 are actually gonna be equal to each other. Now, what are those gonna be? Well, remember, it's to the middle of the part in question. So you're gonna have to move up one inch and then move into parts one and two by three inches. So that gives us what? Well, that gives us y1 and y2 equal to each other and those would be uh, four inches okay and then y3 is going to be again measured vertically from the origin halfway into uh, part number three so that's going to be half an inch all right now, um, substituting all of these values along with the areas into your y bar equation. Also, we can check off the y1, 2, 3 now that we know them. Substituting in all these values, I'm just going to go ahead and substitute them in. And I, I encourage you to pause the video and punch this in. Make sure you get the same value as me, but I get 2.6 inches here. Okay. So um, that's my centroid. The next thing we're gonna need to do is uh, we're now ready to start calculating those moment of inertia values, okay? So let's start with I sub X. If you remember from our previous background video, I sub X is gonna equal the summation as I little i goes from one to N of I sub X sub I plus A sub I d sub y sub i squared, okay? Now, what I'm gonna do is redraw our figure just to help us um, visualize these values a little bit better. So here's our, our same figure redrawn, and um, we figured out that the centroid is about right here. This is our centroidal x-axis, and what defines it is y bar, okay? And then uh, our axis of symmetry is right here. This is our centroidal y-axis, okay? And then of course, what defines it is x bar here, okay? Which we already calculated. So, um, in this moment of inertia formula, what do we already know? Well, for sure, we know A sub I. We know the areas of all three of these pieces. In fact, we can go ahead and, you know, remind ourselves how we separated these pieces off. 
That was one, that was two, and this is area three down here. So we know those already. What about the individual moment of inertia values of each of the uh, parts? Well, that's where we're gonna perform some calculations here. We're gonna say I sub X one and I sub X two are equal. And they're equal, of course, because look at this, they're the same size, right? They, these, these two rectangles are the same size. If you remember from our above figure, they were six inches by one inch. Both of them six inches by one inch here, okay? So how do we compute the area of a rectangle? Well, it's BH cubed over 12 when you're dealing with I sub X. So we're gonna have one inch times six inches cubed over 12, okay? And so when we punch that through, we should get 18 inches to the fourth here, all right? Next, we're gonna get I X three. That's this bottom rectangle here. And so how big is that bottom rectangle? Well, this bottom length is eight inches and the height here was one inch. So again, we're gonna have a BH cubed over 12. That's gonna be uh, eight inches times one inch cubed over 12. This is of course just 0.6667 inches to the fourth power, okay? Now let's talk about these D sub Y sub I values. So we can go ahead and check off I sub X sub I, we got those. Now we need D sub Y uh, one, two, and three, okay? So let's look at one and two first. Well, if you remember um, from our previous video, D sub Y is a vertical distance between Y bar where Y bar is defined here, which is the centroidal X axis, and the centroidal X axis of each individual part, okay? So for example, if I change colors here, parts one and two are gonna have centroidal X axis here, okay? So what I'm looking for is this value right here. This is D sub Y one, and then over here, this is D sub Y two. Again, it's a vertical distance between the overall centroidal X axis, X axis, and the centroidal X axis of part one, part two, so on and so forth, okay? So it just so happens that D Y one and dy2, dy1 and dy2 are equal to one another. So what is this distance right here? What is this distance? Well, what you're gonna do is you're gonna take this distance from the base up to the centroidal axis of that part, and you're gonna subtract the y bar value we just got. That will leave over this distance right here. So to calculate that, that's just gonna be four inches minus 2.6 inches. And so that gives us 1.4 inches for both dy1 and dy2. In a similar way, we're gonna say dy3 is right here in the middle. Not, uh, well, where it's gonna come from the middle of that bottom piece. So this is a horizontal x-axis of that bottom piece. So dy3 is actually gonna be this dimension right here, dy3. So the best way to calculate that is we're gonna say y bar minus this little uh, thickness of um, half of that, the bottom part three thickness, okay? So when we type this in or punch this in, we're gonna say dy3 is gonna be equal to 2.6 inches minus 0.5 inches equals 2.1 inches, okay? Now, finally, we can substitute everything in our I sub X equation. So I'm gonna expand out this summation um, equation here, okay? And we can check this off as well. So part one, part one is gonna be I sub X one plus A one D sub Y one squared. 
And then we have the term for part two, i sub x2 plus a2 dy2 squared. And then we have part three, i sub x3 plus a3 d sub y3 squared. So now we can, this, this is the expanded version of that summation equation. We can substitute all of our values in and we gotta be very careful. You're squaring the D value, not the A value in each of these terms. So if I substitute values in, I'm gonna say 18 inches to the fourth plus six inches squared. The inches are squared there then times 1.4 inches. Here you're actually squaring the 1.4 plus. Now the second term happens to be the same as the first term, so we could have just multiplied that by two inches squared, 1.4 inches, and you're squaring the 1.4. Then I'm gonna have to wrap this around here, 0 0.6667 inches to the fourth plus eight inches squared times 2.1 inches, and that gets squared. So punch this in very carefully, maybe punch it in one part at a time in your calculator, but you should get about 95.5 inches to the fourth. And that's part of uh, our answer, okay? That's one of our answers. The next uh, part of this particular problem, it did also ask for I sub Y, okay? so i sub y has a similar formula as i sub x. We have a summation as i goes from one to n of i sub y sub i plus a sub i d sub x sub i squared. Okay, now we need to calculate i y for each of the three parts. So it turns out i y1 and i y2 are equal to each other. Now this is equal to h b cubed over 12 for both of those parts. So that's gonna be six inches times one inch cubed over 12. That's just 0.5 inches to the fourth. I, Y, three again, h b cubed over 12 for part three. So that's one inch times eight inches cubed over 12. And that's 42.5 six, seven inches to the fourth, okay? And um, we need to go ahead and get D sub X one, two, and three. So D sub X one is gonna be equal to D sub X two, which is equal to 3.5 inches. Why is that? Well, again, if we look back at our little help figure, um, D sub X is gonna be the distance from the overall centroid to the centroid of each part and it's the horizontal measurement. So like DX1 is this distance right here. Okay, it's, it's this distance here is DX1. DX2 is this distance here. So what is that? Well, it's four inches minus half an inch here. So that's where I'm getting the 3.5. Okay, and then dx3 is zero because we had symmetry on our side. So we have the centroidal y-axis right smack dab in the middle. So there is no dx3. So I'm gonna expand my uh, iy formula. And when I expand it, um, I'm gonna, um, just skip right to the answer. I get 190.7 inches to the fourth. Now, if I were you, I would take a few minutes, pause the video, and you do this expansion and you make sure you can get the same value that I just got here. But in summary, in summary, we get IX equals 95.5 inches to the fourth and IY is 190.7 inches to the fourth. I hope this video was helpful. If you liked it, please hit like and subscribe and be on the lookout for more content. Thanks for watching.